Next on the list, we have some interesting and great news if you're Mr. Virgil Abloh and if you're also one of the hangers-on that happens to kind of hang around him and wants to gain opportunities within the fashion scene. Virgil Abloh has a seat at the LVMH, LVMH power table. The luxury group has bought a majority stake in Off-White and given its founder a license to shake up more than just fashion and he's got skin in the game. So really great news overall in terms of representation, in terms of inclusivity, in terms of diversity and hiring. And it's not even a black thing. It's more so just a non whatever the fashion scene is at the moment. It's just, you know, unfortunately, um, there it's probably one of the most um, slow moving industries it feels like they don't really respond well to what's happening in society it seems to just do their own thing and for the most part customers don't seem to care and it just seems to keep trudging on you think about all the controversy that happened with you know Dolce Gabbana in China they obviously got cancelled quote unquote for a brief period of time but it just continued as per normal LV you know Vogue Runway still features them brands are still or magazines are still pulling their pieces and featuring them in editorials things don't really change quickly in fashion they change slowly or they change because they're monetarily viable it becomes a commercially um, proficient way to approach business, right? And that's why they tend to do it. So it's less about they give a shit about Black Lives Matter and more so that they're just doing it because it seems like a beneficial thing to do, both in a cultural point of view, you know, making sure that they got the great engagement, they're in all the right places, and also making sure that they're selling the product because that's what in the business of doing. So the article says the following Virgil, the fashion designer, DJ, and pundit of pop culture. What's a pundit of pop culture? Should I start calling myself that? I started relating to myself as a cultural commentator but maybe I should say pundit of culture in it um, is about to become the most powerful black executive at the most powerful luxury goods group in the world this is why I say this sentence here is why a lot of people should maybe um, as much as they don't like the guy put that to one side and just think that this is a net benefit overall going forward because think about all the amazing creative talented fresh and creatives and individuals that have come before Virgil who never got this opportunity before it was never even mentioned right and now he's the first or he's, no, he's one of the only you know people of that level doing the thing that he's doing that looks the way that he looks right it's insane to think that so it does go to prove that these companies these conglomerates don't really give a shit really about blm they're just doing it because he seems to fit he's the right person to do it at this time he seems to have the culture in the middle of his hands and he seems to get it and he seems to sell product that's essentially why they're doing it no other reason but again it's good because regardless he still seems like a person that's going to be quite selfless he's going to leave the, do the door slightly ajar for whoever's coming behind him and they're going to come through and hopefully take the opportunities and chances regardless if it's given you know because of quote unquote affirmative action at this point it doesn't really matter it's just necessary to have a bit of a shake up different voices in the room just so we can as customers even just as pure people that just want to view the finished product in the magazine on a video stream can get something far more interesting right less of the same old same old something to shake up and make it a little bit more interesting because at the moment it was feeling a little bit stale and there's one thing that you can't say about Virgil and his work is that it's not stale it's always an event it's always a moment it's always a moment it's like I have to think of it as well maybe throughout the entirety of his time doing stuff he might be one of the only people show that I've actually watched on live stream and not because you know I'm watching him because I want to see amazing clothes but just because of the overall production the event the the spectacle of it all right that's what really makes what he does really really interesting I feel like and if even everybody associated with it you look at stuff that Heron Preston does Matthew William does it's all you know kind of driven from a really real cultural um, essence as opposed to just doing stuff in terms of making nice clothes it continues on Tuesday of VMH announced it was acquiring a 60% stake in Off-White the luxury streetwear brand Ablo founded in 2013 and which he still designs alongside his job at Twisted Director Louis Vuitton Men's 2013 do you remember when that first launched that was a what was the first lookbook that was with Asa Brocky and them right so imagine that brand that we saw that used to make you know those rugby shirts with the numbers on the back and shit that every, he got remember that was give the guy credit as well right he's been really good at kind of changing the way he's been perceived in public or changing how he's approached criticism because there was a period of time where he was trying to lean into the troll thing with Ben Trill I'm a troll I'm a troll I'm a troll and then with the rugby shirts buying them for twenty dollars and selling them for six hundred bucks and being unashamed about the flagrancy of it all right but then he slowly pivoted away from that and then turned into more of a I'm for the community I'm for the people I'm doing it for everyone coming behind me don't call me a designer he did a really good way of kind of changing the narrative around it him somewhat because I, again I, I think deep down regardless of maybe some of the stuff that people have heard I think he's not a bad dude so I don't think he could have done that kind of I'm going to be a hill I'm going to be um the what you call it who's that what's what's his name again I'm going to be the what's his name 
what's his flipping name the guy that does the white guy does all the horrible diamond teeth stuff he can't be that kind of bad character he needs to just be himself and this is a good um you know recognition of the work that he's done bro to be in this position is mad in addition Ablo 40 will be taking on bigger role at vmh working across such categories as wine and spirits awesome hospitality which makes sense because i do think he mentions he wants to do something with the hotel and smashing styles and bringing more diverse voices to variety of brands that's interesting because the hotel thing if i remember he did not mention he was going to do it so and it went quiet so maybe this is something that's been in the discussions for a while and then he kind of put the hotel stuff to bed so that he could do it under the banner of lvmh because that's you know hella more swaggy that you do it like that than do it on your own he says i'm getting a seat at the table miss abler said cheerfully speaking for a zoom via chicago where he lives how he still lives in chicago is beyond me isn't it mad isn't it he hasn't moved at all didn't really make any effort to move kind of it's pretty cool but in terms of considering off-white space in milan louis vuitton's obviously in paris it's mad, isn't it? Though his job definition is still fairly nebulous, the news gives him a sabler, the first generation guy named American, a fairly broad remit and makes off white one of the rare brands ever made stable, not rooted in European heritage. Um, it also marks a potential new stage in evolution, which has emerged from the pandemic. The share has gone up 60% this year, blah, blah, blah. Um, it says here the we're trying to emulate the model that already exists. No, we're not trying to emulate the model that already exists, says Mike, Michael Burke, chief executive of Louis Vuitton. It's more like what Bernard Arnault did when he bought Dior and decided to create a federation of luxury brands that is shake up the status quo he's sucking off his boss there a bit but i get what he means now mr arno is trying to kick his own organizations out of his comfort zone with Ablo as the zeitgeist whisperer definitely makes sense the news arrange the news arrangement is akin to the collaboration mr Ablo specializes in with ikea nike's champion vitro equinox to name a few but pumped up on a protein drink with long-term implications Ablo isn't just getting a cool new sounding gig he is getting an equity stake in whatever cross-pollinated project he develops Bumbarated, cash, cash, money, mate. So it's pulling a salary from LVMH, pulling a salary from all the collaborations, pulling a salary from Nike, and then pulling a salary on top of that with this um, LVMH seat at the table news is absolutely wild, bruv. Kicked up to the max, but also it gives them some skin in the game, right? It gives them a reason to go extra hard. And if there's one thing that we can say about the guy, he might not like the quality of his work, but there's no denying that he is number one Uno, the, the hardest working man out there in fashion, it has to be. And I would imagine LVMH jumped on him because since the passing of Carla, there hasn't been really anybody that can take that mantle of just doing everything um you know just being willing to do whatever and then of course if you know whatever holding company that owns you or that's invested the money in you is super happy because even if some project ends up failing because you've just got such a high output you're you're bound to um you're bound to catch thunder in the or you're bound to catch thunder in a bottle at one moment in time and that's what he's been able to do over these years so he's definitely built a good cv of just you know doing many many projects at lightning break speed and so far for the most part they've all been into very very successful he says yeah we're trying to make the founders turn over their graves but in the best way said mr burke that's not going to sit well with some fashion um aficionado just said or pure sorry says it continues some of our biggest brands have the tendency not to see it's it's in their best interest to stay plugged into the contemporary world very true being plugged into contemporary world has not been a problem for miss abelow who's often compared to jeff coons didn't they compare him to carl lagerford this actual writer why is she saying jeff coons i might wonder this because of the backlash um refers to himself as a maker rather than designer and touts a three percent approach which holds that changing just three percent of the design is enough to qualify for as new some of these detractors are probably won't be happy about that we can move we move lvmh has been vocal about the commitment to diversity equity and inclusion yeah right those entirely whiteboard and negative community <laughs> exactly um it did not help that lvmh put fenty the short-lived experiment of, of building a direct-to-consumer brand from scratch with rihanna on hold last year though the company remains involved with rihanna through a cosmetic brand i just think that was just not done well it probably you know after the first season or the first lookbook the quality of fenty stuff went a bit downhill rihanna's got a million in one project she's probably doing from behind the scenes and it's pretty hard to make a direct-to-consumer brand from the ground up that people are going to care about it's just difficult to do it's not easy so i don't think this was a necessarily a uh, a kind of spite or kind of you know a, a response to the lack of diversity and inclusion i think in general it's just like i said it should be concerning to most people that after all these years of great black in you know fashion creative people that have worked in the industry for this to be the first major hire and the first kind of person of color that's been able to have a seat on the table is a bit concerning but again regardless i think this is the perfect person to put there the new arrangement with Ablo and Miss Off and Off White is part of a flurry of activity on part of LVMH. It bought Tiffany last year 
last week it announced that it was taking minority stake in Phoebe Fowler's namesake venture and last month it renovated and opened a department store and later this year the ultra luxury Cheval Blanc Hotel and Dior Spa will open in Paris you got Spike Lee there wearing an uh, is that an off-white design suit or is a Louis Vuitton suit Louis Vuitton suit to the Cannes Film Festival in fluorescent pink those colours always look good on black skin and it looks banging the deal also positions off-white which is most famous for his ironic deployment of quotation marks for Abelow terms generational growth the off why the contemporary brand is still operated by New Guards. So I was wondering. So it's still operated by New Guards Group, the Italian manufacturing company that owns the license for the brand and itself is owned by Farfetched. Off White LCC, which owns a trademark, will be incorporated into the LVMH Fashion and Leather Goods Group. In terms of the deal were not disclosed, though. Mr. Burke said it took five minutes to come to an agreement. They backed up the. Don't, don't get me wrong. They said they're going to say that, but they backed up the Brinks truck for Virgil for sure. So it's owned by New Guards Group, still manufacturing who then is under Farfetched, but then Off-White LCC, which is separate from that, is owned by LVMH. I don't know how he's done it, but fair enough to the guy, in it? Fair still. He's going to get the bag. He's going to get the opportunity to influence things at the highest level. And again, that's going to serve as inspiration and direction for people coming up for generations to come. And I think that's all you can really hope for. I think, you know, nothing... I don't think... That there needs to be some compromise because at the end of the day, these companies at LVMH are not going to do these sort of things out of charity, right? They're only doing it because it's a financially viable solution. And they're only doing it, again, because Virgil's really good what he does so that's another reason so the fact that he does it and some people are not fans of his work is by the by i think in general from what we've seen evidence so far he's been able to provide opportunities and and platforms for various people some of them undeserving and they've been able to build entire careers off the back of that so if he can have a bigger platform and more resources to do so within the fashion system to tell better stories um to influence a whole generation of people i'm sure he's going to do it because if anything selfishly it just makes his legacy and his time on the seen that much more sweet and that much more impactful so i definitely think it's going to be a good thing for all parties involved so for sure if you're looking to do something in that space you probably is best to kind of you know get a move on get on it because for sure there's going to be many opportunities going forward for sure because you know streetwear has definitely made a mark now man it's definitely made a mark 